Welcome back. I hope that we have looked at uh, writing in the perspective of the real world. Writers today, learners today, face changes and challenges. We write many different things in many different ways. In the Common European Framework, we talk of the different domains, the public, the personal, occupational and the educational domain. And the style of writing, the content of writing, is inevitably very different in these different domains. We as assessors also face challenges. How important, for example, is accuracy in writing? And I hope that we've been able to take a look at errors and mistakes and what we should do about them. And I hope that we've shown that it shouldn't be simply a matter of correction, but improvement. My feeling is that learners are sometimes rather demotivated by pure correction, but that nobody objects to improvement. So a suggestion of an improvement code is one that I hope you will take on. Um, I hope that we've explained also the relationship between international ESOL and the Common European Framework, because the Common European Framework, um, if you look at the section on writing, takes us through from at A1 breakthrough preliminary, I can write a short, simple postcard, I can fill in forms, write through Achiever, I can write simple connected text on topics which are familiar or of personal interest, up to Communicator, I can write clear, detailed text on a wide range of subjects related to my interests, as high as to Mastery, I can write clear, smoothly flowing text in an appropriate style. Um, these are all real challenges, not just for learners, but also for teachers. How do we step by step, stage by stage, get our learners to be able to do these things? Obviously, if we set them an appropriate task with an, with an appropriate degree of challenge, that is going to help. But we also need to give positive feedback. We also need to show how a learner can improve and climb up the scale. We as assessors are, as we've seen, looking for different things in writing. It is not just a question of penalising errors. Accuracy is, of course, an important part of writing, but it's not all important. Um, I hope that we've also looked at really practical details, such as, can a learner use a dictionary? Well, in the Sitting Guild's International ESOL test, the answer is yes. If writing is a real-life skill, why shouldn't people be able to use real life tools that will help them to perform better? I hope we've also given you some ideas on how we can promote effective use of dictionaries. We've also looked at how we as assessors expect learners to produce more as the levels go higher. More not just in terms of volume, of course there are greater word limits, but also more in terms of range of language. Also, more in terms of organisation. Also, more in terms of the sheer scope. When we look at, for example, expert C1, um, I can express myself in clear, well-structured text, expressing points of view. I can write about complex subjects in a letter, an essay or a report. So it's no longer the days when writing was just composition. Writing is actually producing real-life reports articles as well as more academic writing. The question of how we should approach mistakes and errors will always be controversial. If you at least know what we as assessors are looking for, you'll see that accuracy is one part, but not the only part of what we need to encourage our learners to do to improve their writing skills. I hope that we've also given you some practical classroom teaching ideas. Ideas which will not only be effective, but will also actually be enjoyable. I hope that you found some of the ideas for writing enjoyable, even as you were going through this workshop. Because if you think they're enjoyable, then there's every chance your learners will feel the same. It is important to motivate learners to write. It is very important to explain to them that writing does play an equal part in the assessment. It is just as important as the listening, which they encounter first, or the reading, which they see. The writing also carries 33 and a third percent of the marks. 
sometimes, uh, speaking teacher to teacher, I find that I need to encourage my learners not to leave the writing to a short span of time at the end. They need to manage the time. They need to realise that it's their opportunity to show what they can do. And what they can do is what the Common European Framework is all about. We've had a very short time together. Um, don't forget that Sitting Guilds has produced support materials. There are teaching support materials for our ESOL and International Spoken ESOL um, at all levels from A1 up to and including C2. Materials come with a teacher's book which is full of more ideas for communicative, enjoyable writing. Don't forget also that the website gives you not only the handbook with the topics um, for the writing, also with the assessment criteria and a breakdown of marks. It gives you access to a whole range of sample papers. It gives your learners the chance to practice before they take the test. And please don't forget also that this is just one of a series of workshops. International ESOL features writing, but also listening and reading. So I very much hope that if you found this workshop useful, if you found it enjoyable, then you will be motivated to go back and look at the other workshops as well. Hope we've been of use and hope that what we've done um, with the workshop will help you better prepare your candidates to be confident and succeed in the spoken ESOL test. Goodbye for now and hope to see you again.